mother indicate that women are more than mothers. The campaign is to empower infertile women and women who fail to have children through access to information, health, change of mindset and culture, and empowering them uh, economically and socially. There is many uh, different angles of our strategy. One of them is raising, of course, awareness about uh, infertility prevention, and of course, we're building uh, advocacy for the whole cause through our panels and our events and media coverage, social media, and also uh, define policies to regulate ART, knowing that in sub-Saharan African countries, there is still no defined policies for ART uh, regulation, including surrogacy, uh, egg donation, and other, other things. We, we want to support governments to do so. And in the and women, this is all for the future, future couples, raise their awareness and building advocacy and, and uh, policies. But for the women who are already too late for them to have children, we also have something for them. You will see it's empowering them through establishing small businesses so we can be independent and earn the society respect and stop thinking that the only purpose of their existence is to be a baby making machine. Women are overwhelmingly late for infertility and discriminated against, abused and mistreated by the husband, family and community. Together with Mark More Than a Mother campaign, we will work on different angles to address infertility treatment challenges in Nigeria. We will continuously build our advocacy to raise awareness about infertility prevention male infertility and sensitize the community to change the culture of discrimination and disrespect of infertile women. We will support Mark more than a mother all the way and we are very proud of this campaign and we will put in all our best to ensure that we have a positive result. I thank you all for listening. The campaign is done Mark more than a mother and it's simply stating that you are more than a mother. It doesn't matter if you have children or you don't have children. You are more than a mother. We are not defined by how many children we have. But then it is a sad state in Africa that when you don't have a child as a woman, you're like a caste person in the society. The stigma is very, very high in Africa. And it is sad because it is always the women that will bear the pain, the shame, the embarrassment, even when they're not the ones who are suffering from that. For men, the problem is that most men associate ability to have intercourse with fertility. So when you say, when the man comes to the clinic and you say, Oh, your wife is not having. He said, "Yeah, I'm able to have intercourse and and have this pan." And they don't know that having a bill, being able to produce pan does not necessarily mean that there are pan cells in those pan. So education is important. Luckily, infertility is now regarded as a human rights issue in the WHO. So. My question now will go to Professor Joe Simpson, the former president of IFFS. I want you to tell us about the uh, perception of Merck more than a mother during your board conference uh, in New Delhi last week, and uh, how we you see that we can take it further uh, globally. First of all, it's important to realize that the stories that you've heard. Uh, we as physicians appear part of that. So we certainly hear the poignant pleas of women and men uh, who wish to have their uh, infertility uh, problems addressed quickly, quietly, secretively, uh, and, and we hear that. Uh, and so how do we respond to that? We respond to that in a scientific and a medical uh, way. Uh, those of us who are in the medical schools, like uh, Dr. Holt and myself and, and others, uh, we do experiments that we devise uh, therapies that we think are effective 
ways to diagnosis, ways to understand exactly why these problems have occurred. And if, if we are successful, uh, we publish these articles in scientific journals. We argue among ourselves about facts that the patients uh, don't understand, or either other people in the uh, highly educated tier with which we deal find boring, they're statistical, uh, they are based upon small methods, uh, and it really doesn't go very far. So there are other roles that need to be played. A key role, obviously, is the legislative process. Uh, we hope to have an advocate like the man on my left right here, uh, but it takes more than one vote uh, to uh, carry a bill through. So really what happens is that we go back to the media, or we should have gone back to the media before, which we did not on a consistent basis, and try to drum up support. And I truly believe what all the panel has uh, serious concerns about. It's about education. Education is the only vehicle starting from uh, small cases and building education ladder that can educate uh, future uh, citizens and uh, educate them about what they have to do in order to be healthy in their, in their life. And controlling social media, yes, we are here to, to support, but also we need to make sure that the information is provided through TV channels, through other media, the social media is correct and accurate because very frequently we find people are misled to believe certain things that are not true. So we have a responsibility also, all stakeholders, to ensure that the accuracy of information and education, education, education. Thank you very, very, very much. I'd like now to call Helen uh, Feller. We have watched her um, video now, and I would like to call her to the stage to uh, tell you that she is real and here, and she's a hero of infertility, and she will share with us. No, no, what I want to tell us, what did you face with infertility, and what is the situation now? Are you happier? I'd just like to get a little more heavy to Okay, when she was with her husband, because of the fertility, there was no peace of mind. She was suffering. There was nothing to eat. Corals here and there. Things were not moving on fine for her. What about now? After, after you have your own business? Okay. Into the next one, they need to business. They need to take care. Oh, business She doesn't know what to say. No, good, my She's needing to thank me for what they've done to her. Thank you very much. And um, let me start by thanking Mark and their partners. I tell you, it is important that we're here because we consider ourselves to be the bona fide custodian of women's health in Nigeria. So, we run the clinics in obstetrics and gynecology. We are clinicians. And I can tell you that more than 60% of our gynecological clinic consultations is infertility related. So it's the huge population of patients that we have in our obstetrics and gynecology clinics. And it is a challenge because fertility, infertility management can be considerably expensive. And so it's important that advocacy should be made 
But I want us to see that what we have to do should dovetail into what can be done for the people at grassroots levels. And one of the things that we were asked, primarily not only in the United States, but in our, from our international members, was the need for training in uh, embryology la laboratory personnel. So we developed a 34-module um, uh, course in embryology. And you know, initially, uh, we had been talking to some of our colleagues in India about uh, having um, individuals take the 34 modules first. There's a, you take all 34 modules, there, and then at the end of it, you take a, a, a test, uh, and you get a certificate of completion of this. Um, and, and our uh, colleagues in India wanted to couple that with a visit to the United States for several weeks. Um, you know, my sense is you, there's not a whole lot you're going to learn in the lab uh, for several weeks, and it, it, if that's the program that works for them, and we'll continue to pursue that. However, one thought is that we could use this 34 module uh, course in embryology, have the individuals complete it, and they would have a much richer and more robust experience when they got there for a three month on site uh, course. So that's something that certainly we're willing to explore. First, let me start by thanking Mark. You've shown a big sign of the heart to practitioners in infertility. It's not, it's a disease of women of many years before they arrive on the consulting room of the doctor. Too often, we are not able to connect with the past in treating these people. So today's program and many that Merck has held around the world is bringing the feeling beyond just medicine to the table. And this is to be encouraged and we are thankful for this. In Nigeria, the, we have about a thousand and four hundred registered uh, of the strong and colony practicing uh, currently in this country is reported among the uh, sisters and the fair territory. And some three years ago we did a survey among our members. We asked our members to indicate their area of source specialty interest. And about 60% of the oncologists indicated interest in infertility management. That is, a, you know, that is a good sign. But unfortunately, among these, very few of them are actually on about any form of training beyond the fellowship that qualifies them as a gynecology. That is not unexpected because currently in Nigeria, the two provided colleges, the National Provided College and the Western Provided College, only stop at general obstetric and gynecological training. There is no source specialization yet. So the few that have had source specialty training are those that have done it through self effort by sponsoring themselves to UK, Europe, uh, America, uh, sometime to India. In developing a uh, regulation, one has to understand three principles. What is it that one to achieve? And we recognize in Uganda that reproduction is a right for everyone. Whether you achieve it naturally or you achieve it with assistance of your doctor. In any case, any reproduction is a collaboration. It's a collaboration between the man and the woman. When the man is the third factor, the doctor in, there should really not be too much of a problem absorbing that. Particularly where the technology has now been accepted, it is no longer experimental, it is a straightforward process. So that is the primary principle that the way of regulation should develop. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, for my panelists and for the very important information we shared with the audience. Thank you for for being with us and having a very important uh, part of your time today with us. And I hope that uh, we were uh, interesting for you and we provided uh, the the whole perspective and overview about Merk more than a mother. And thank you very, very much for being with us. Thank you.